one of the things we think about as we begin to grow a little older, and I'm still young, is about building an inheritance for the next generation, both the spiritual generation as well as our physical generations. There was a, a wise lady in our church for many years who always taught me how she built an inheritance for her children and how she planned so far ahead. And I remember as a younger pastor listening to this wise woman, and she's still around, and how she cared for the next generation. But brothers and sisters, not only must we care for them financially, we must care for them spiritually. If we're going to build the next generation, it's not enough that we just pass on a financial or a physical or material inheritance to them. We need to pass on to them spiritual principles. Now, I want you to notice how Moses talks about bringing up the next generation. Deuteronomy 6, beginning with verse 1. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land where you are about to enter and occupy, and you and your children and your grandchildren, all right, so we're talking not just our kids, we're talking about our grandkids, must fear the Lord. Your God, as long as you live, if you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. All right, so you want our kids to have a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you. Do you want everything to go well with your kids? All will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord your God, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Wow. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road and when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders and write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. Now, now beloved, I want you to notice, how is it that we are to train our children in the principles of God? Well, number one, repeat them again and again, verse 7. Do you want your children to get the truth of God's word? Then repeat them again and again. Do you want them to get their ethics and their morals from, forgive me, the university, or do you want them to get them from the word of God? Then repeat them again and again. Talk about them when you're at home. Talk about the principles of God. Talk about the scriptures when you are at home. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're traveling together, when you're, you're sitting around together. Talk about the word. And when you're going to bed, talk about the word. And when you're getting up, talk about the word. Now, beloved, if you will learn to do this, and then he says, tie them on your hands and wear them on your forehead, write them on the doorpost. So every time the kid leaves the house, he sees the scripture verse on the house. Now, parents, if we're going to raise our children to fear God, to respect God, we have to talk about his word. It, ha it has to be a central thing that fills our hearts, and then out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth comes. The word. We have to sit around and have devotions with our kids and read the Bible to our kids. We have to sit there and watch a TV show and then do what I, what my daughter calls the daddy pause, where we pause the movie or we pause the TV show, and then we say, now, let's talk about what you just saw. What does the word of God say? Now, brothers and sisters, if you want to raise Christian kids, this is what it's going to take. Not just leaving them an inheritance. Not just leaving, well, children's church and the youth pastors, they'll teach our kids. You have to be involved. Constantly talking to your kids about the words. Because if you go on to continue in our text, to Deuteronomy 7, verse 2 and 4, it said, when the Lord your God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them, make no treaties with them, and show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them, and do not let your daughters or sons marry their sons or daughters, for they will lead your children away from me. They will lead, we always think, well, they'll evangelize them. No, it always goes the other way around. They'll lead your children away from me to worship other gods. Now, one of the things I want you to notice, and there's a lot in this passage, but I just want you to notice, God says, the next generation, please. Compromise goes after the kids. The world goes after the kids. They haven't seen enough. They haven't lived long enough to see the penalties and the pain of sin. 
So compromise goes after the kids. You know, the one thing about getting a little older is you watch the pain of it all. You know, I, I just heard the stories of another preacher who got drunk and, you know, now his whole life is discredited. And I'm going, you know, it just hurts every fiber of your being. But young people haven't lived a long, a long enough to see that yet. Parents, please, compromise goes after your children. You need to make sure that you've got your kids in the house of God, and you need to make sure that every day you talk to your kids about the Scripture. From the time they're babies, every day you're talking to your kids from the Scripture. You're bringing them into the house of God, and you're recognizing the world is targeting, the kingdom of darkness is targeting my children so that there will not be a next generation of believers. Let's leave our kids a Christian heritage.